Hello guys! We're here with another tutorial before this year's Halloween. This time it's for an easier and simpler look than usual because I know not everyone wants to prepare 25 weeks before Halloween and spend half their money on their disguise. So I'm giving you dark, goth, kind of emo fairy with wings and latex tears. Let's do this. I'm starting with the wings. On a table, I lay a big piece of paper on which I will transfer the small sketches I have made of the shape I want my wings to have. With a soft pencil, I draw it on a bigger scale. On the initial sketch, there's also a bottom part, but I ended up not using it. Then I take some wire. Not too thin, but not too thick also. You want it to be malleable, but not lose its shape. Using my fingers and a pair of pliers, I mold the wires the same shape as the one I've drawn. About every two lines, I bring the wire all the way to the beginning of the wing and I cut it with the pliers. Now that I have the skeleton of the wing ready, I take some electrical tape and first I wrap a small piece around the edges. Then with small pieces of tape I connect the parts that will be covered later, leaving just enough space as I see in the sketch below the skeleton. I do it to the whole wing. I also hold together the extra wires that lead to the base of the wing with the tape. I did the same exact thing for the other wing. For their base I used the triangle shaped sturdy wire that was covered with foam. I found it on a Halloween decoration Grim Reaper. It looked useful for this job, so I took it out. I lay it next to the base of the other wing and then I basically wrap the wires around it. You want to cut the wires that are too long and also wrap them in a way that they won't stab you in the back. I covered the edges in tape to make them less sharp, but they still stung a little. Then with more electrical tape I cover more of the wings. I don't know if that's necessary, I was just feeling insecure. <laughs> For the cobwebs I used some kind of rack that was also on that Grim Reaper Halloween decoration I mentioned. First I use a big bowl with water. I pour some tempera paint in it and stir it to completely dilute it. I sew the rag in there and stir it in as well. When it's all soaked in paint, I let it dry in my bathtub. I covered the wing in leatherette. I bought too much of it for another look, so I might as well use it. I lay it on the table with the back side facing up and I prop the wing on top. With a pen I outline the shape of the wing. I outline the other side as well. I cut the leatherette and I end up with both sides. I take the rag that has now dried. As you can see it turned grey because I used tempera. I roughly cut it in small pieces that are supposed to fill in the parts I chose. With hot glue I touch them on the parts covered in electrical tape. Later, I lay the leatherette piece on top and I glue it on after squirting glue on the wires, which are basically the outlines. I do the same thing with the other side and of course follow the same process with the other wing. More on the application later. For the makeup. As you must have realized, I am not the star of this look. This is my friend Nelly, she offered to serve as my canvas, so she got what she asked for. <laughs> I am here as well, of course, hi! I am starting off by spreading a very light foundation and concealer with a brush. I use the concealer mainly around the eyes and on her nose in order to highlight as well.
Then with a puffy powder sponge, I load translucent powder on her face to set it. I use a lot of it because it will also make her face appear paler. I dust the excess off with a powder brush. Using a very thin angled brush, I take a bit of cream contour and I fill in the eyebrow. I also extend them a little bit and emphasize the arch. With the same brush and brown eyeshadow, I set them. I take a black creamy pencil and spread the color on her lids. With a concealer brush, I make it more even and cover the whole lid. Then I take matte black eyeshadow on a fluffy brush to set the creamy consistency and to kind of blend the edges more. A faster method for solid black eye is black water activated body paint on a thin brush. I paint the lower eyelid and connect it with a color on the upper lid. While the paint is still somewhat wet, I blend it more to the skin to give it softer edges. I also drew a pointy inner corner. I set and blend it again using black eyeshadow. I contoured her face using a not too fluffy contour brush and dark brown eyeshadow. I built the color on her face little by little. I mainly contoured the cheekbones, the chin and the jawline. I used some body paint on the lips but later I used black lipstick on a blending brush to make the edges appear more smudged. She put on two wig caps for the week later on and I painted the neck with black water activated body paint. Looking back, the shape is kind of stupid, I should have gone with just shading but there's nothing I can do for it now. The cheekbones weren't as dramatic as I wanted them to be so I contoured on a smaller radius using black eyeshadow. I also wanted to give her more of an edge, so with a thin brush and black body paint I drew small lines, kinda like veins on the side of her face. In the finished look you can't really see them because of the wig, but I really like them. There's no particular pattern, I just drew lines till the color faded at some point towards the center of the face. I also drew them on her temples. In order to make the really cool latex tears which I have done before on an old look, I pour some latex in a cup and a couple drops of non-toxic liquid tempera. Then with a spatula, I stir and stir till the color is blended with the latex and looks something like this. It looks grey, but don't worry, it will dry black. Using the spatula, I draw the tears where I want them to be and I build on them with more latex to make them appear more three-dimensional. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way, um, I would make even more layers because they didn't end up as voluminous as I'd hoped. Be very careful with latex around your eyes, it also has ammonia which can make them water a lot. I glued on some false lashes, I retouched the tears and the eyes and I apply some highlighter on the forehead, the nose, the chin, the cheekbones and the brow bones. Then we drove to the forest where I attached the wings using elastic bands that I tied on the upper parts of the base, then around her shoulders and brought them to the point of the triangle on her lower back. I used safety pins wherever I needed and in order to hold them closer to each other, I tied an elastic band close to the upper part of their base. Generally, I did a very rushed job on the wings and I am not very proud, especially about the way I propped them on her back. There are plenty of tutorials out there on that though, so you can do it. For the rest of the costume, I used a cheap long black wig which helped hiding the base of the wings. I made the dress and the hood 
using very cheap white gauze that I dipped in the same color as the cobwebs on the wings. And of course the dress isn't sewn or anything, I just glued the sleeves and secured the back of the neck and her bum with safety pins. I also got bitten in the forest. This is the look overall. I know I usually create much more involved looks, but it's fun to take a step back every now and then to make something easier, especially when you have great company. Big thanks to my friends that helped me. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, follow me on Instagram, at monsterpoly, where you can also see the people that helped me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!